Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're in the vegetable garden. It's beautiful out this morning. The vegetable garden's in the shade for about two minutes in the morning. So I was trying to get out here early uh, so that I could show you, like give you a tour of everything. And then we're gonna harvest potatoes, onions, and strawberries. I'm super excited because I've done a couple of test digs. I dug one hill of potatoes. We'll put the picture on the screen and it was pretty amazing. So I'm hoping I find some really good things underneath the, the soil surface. And that's the fun part about potatoes is that you don't really know what you have going until you start digging them. And the onions are massive. So I've got Walla Wallas and candies that are ready to be harvested. So I thought I'd just go through some of the things to look for, to know when your plants are ready to come out of the ground, as well as some drying, curing, and storing uh, practices. I wanted to get out here really early this morning. I told Aaron last night, like, I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna be out there harvesting at 6 a.m. because I wanna do it when it's cool, when the garden is in the shade, and I wanted to try to beat the construction crew that's building the house right behind the vegetable garden. Russell's with me right now. Um, and they are already up and at them. I accidentally overslept a little bit. So here's kind of a backed up look at the garden space. Before we get into the full tour, I wanna to talk about the potatoes and onions real quick since that is the point of today's video. We have three full beds of potatoes. There's two of them there and there's one on the far side. You can see that the plants are starting to flop over. They're starting to yellow. They're looking pretty crummy. And uh, I'm actually past the maturity date from when I planted these till today on most of the varieties. So I'm gonna go ahead and dig them today. I did a test dig, like I said, right here. This is the bed of Yukon Golds. These plants look a little bit better, but honestly, I wanna get these cleared out because I still have time to plant more crops if I had the space to do it. Some people will leave the potatoes in the ground until the plant dies completely back, which honestly, go for it if that's the way you've always done it. Um, typically, I like to get them out of the ground because most of the time, like the tubers will form up a little bit bigger if you leave them in longer, um, but I don't find that it makes a huge difference in my experience to leave them that long. And I really would like to plant like a crop of zinnias or something in here for late season interest. And also maybe a couple more fall crops. I planted a bunch of fall crops in the new space. Um, so I'm not as anxious to get like a bunch more food production out of the space but we'll do a little bit. When the potato plants start to bloom, which mine have bloomed a long time ago, that's when they start to form tubers. That's when it gets exciting because you see those blooms and you're like, yes, my plants are forming produce underneath the ground. And that's kind of the fun part with potatoes. You don't really know what's going on underneath the soil surface until you start to dig. And that's why I did a test dig the other day, just to see. And you can start harvesting at that point. You can reach your hands underneath the soil. Typically you've worked the soil and it's nice and fluffy and you can harvest out little baby potatoes. And you can do that right along the way while the plant is still producing potatoes. So you can base your harvest off of the look of the plant and kind of the indicators it's giving you. You can also go by the maturity day. I planted these on April 22nd. I know that they've been in the ground for 98 days, which is pretty much where um, all of my maturity dates fall. I planted five different varieties, one of which has a maturity day of 75 days, the other is 80 days, and then the rest of them fall within like 90 to 100 days. 120 days so I'm right within that window and then with onions you can do the very same thing you can go with the maturity day or by the look of the plant so I planted these onions by little starts on April no not April March 22nd so one month before the potatoes um, and so they've been in the ground for 128 days candy onions and walla wallas are the ones I'm harvesting today candy onions have a maturity day of 90 to 100 days I think and walla wallas are 100 to 120 days so I know that both of them are pretty much at their full maturity they if I left them in the ground they might size up a tiny bit more but they're huge and I'm ready for them to come out you can also go by the look of the plant for onions so right here see how the stem on this one has softened and it's flopping over this onion's ready to come out of the ground look at this Look at how gorgeous that onion is. Beautiful skin on it, huge size. Um, you can see that some of them don't have that kind of softness, so you could technically leave these in the ground a little bit longer, but many of them are producing seed heads, which what happens, not, it's not a big deal, but what they do is they'll like kind of produce this hard stem that goes all the way down through the center of the onion and you just have to cut it out when you're getting ready to use the onions. And I kind of want to keep mine like usable all the way throughout the center. I've already harvested two of the candies. One of them came out from here and I got another one out from over there. I've used one and my parents used one and they are super tasty. And this is the bed of Walla Wallas. Oh my goodness. Look at this. It's just crazy to me that you put these little weak looking sad starts in the ground. They look sad for like weeks and then they turn into this. Sorry about all the hammering noise. Next time I'll try to be out here early enough that I beat the construction crew. 
try not to oversleep. So the Walla Wallas aren't showing as much sign of being like ready in terms of um, flopping over, but they've all got the seed heads. So we're gonna go ahead and pull these. And then the other thing we're gonna harvest today are strawberries. Holy moly. These buried treasure strawberries are incredible. They always look like this. They are just full of berries. You can see like I haven't even kept up on them. A, a bunch of them are kind of overripe a little bit. But I think what I'm gonna do is pull all of them and we'll see how many I have and then I'll just freeze them if I don't have enough for a batch of jam. But I think that's what I'm gonna do with these. So after I get these all harvested and pulled, I'll go over the drying, curing, and storing process that I go through to get the most time out of mine. But let's do a little tour quick before the sun gets over the tree. So looking toward the greenhouse, there's the one arbor with Colette roses. They're a little bit wild, so I need to shear them up so we can get in and out easier, but they're so pretty. Here's my coffee too, <laughs> so this morning's coffee. Aren't those just the prettiest, most sweet roses? Love them. Got more thorns than any rose I've ever grown, but they are beautiful. Over here in this corner, we have more berry treasure strawberries. Look at this. Like huge berries. They're just like, I can't even describe how wonderfully these plants have done. I've got a pot of calendula, which I actually keep in here as an aphid attractant. So the aphids are covering this plant, but they cover this plant instead of covering my vegetables. So typically I leave it until it gets really bad. Then I cut the whole plant back and discard the leaves. Like there's no aphids on my strawberries because they all want to be on this plant. So it's a great plant to put in here as kind of a host plant. That way I don't have to treat with insecticides in here ever. And you'll notice when I show you um, some cabbage that I still have in here that there is a little bit of slug damage, but typically I don't use any insecticides in here at all unless the damage gets really bad. Uh, and so I don't think I've treated, have I treated with anything in here this year? I don't think so. I think it's a matter of keeping your soil healthy, keeping things well watered, and then plants aren't as susceptible because they're a lot happier. And then going back through this arbor, we've got two three by four beds. This one's got sweet potatoes in them, planted them really late and they were really sad looking. Nine out of 12 that I put in this bed took, which for the way they looked, it's pretty good. Like this one, I think this one right here looked that way when I planted it. And I thought, well, we'll see if the roots do anything. Nope. Don't know if we're gonna get any produce, but I had bought the plant, so I thought, well, may as well put them in the ground. The other bed I planted, these look much better. I had Oregon sugar pod snow peas in here. This spring have not planted anything. Oh, and a crop of spinach too, right underneath it. So I will probably do more peas and maybe more greens in this space. And then we've looked at the potato beds already. Those are the candy onions along with some cabbage. My big, massive cabbage I posted a picture of came from right here. It just like pushed everything. You can see how much these didn't develop because that was such a huge cabbage. These formed huge heads, like huge, huge heads. But I just, I grew a lot of cabbage this year. Didn't get to them in time, which is okay because that's good chicken feed, honestly. This plant still looks really good. You can see like the little bit of damage, but not a huge deal to me. This one's still working on forming a head. It's got a little one in there. That looks really good. There's no bug damage on that. So I'll be able to harvest that one out a little bit later. In this bed here, Brussels sprouts. Ooh, aren't those massive? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six Brussels sprout plants in here. These are actually ready to harvest. See those in there? Isn't that crazy how they grow along the interior stock? But I'm not gonna pull these today because I'm not ready for them yet. Then we've got carrots that I planted really early this spring. I honestly, even when they go to seed, I use the flowers and flower arranging. And then I leave the carrots. I planted new ones in the fall crop area out in the new garden. And these I just leave and I harvest them through the winter. And they're not as tender, obviously, because they've been let to, you know, grow a lot bigger. Um, but they're great for roasting still. Same with the beets. <laughs> Got an amazing stand of beets right here. And then the Walla Walla onions fill up the rest of that bed. In this bed, I've got more Walla Wallas that I had extra. One amazel basil plant. It's huge and it even went through a little bit of a of a break you can see like this hole right here we had a really bad windstorm that just broke one of the branches off more strawberry plants which i think i just showed you those didn't i and then we've got easter egg eggplant 
which one of you guys, a gal sent me these seeds and thought I would enjoy growing them. So I grew all 10 of these plants from seed, really pretty purple blooms and these cute little eggplants. Look at those, they are like eggs. I love them. I actually don't care for eggplant, like to eat it, but I thought that this would be a really unique variety, one to try, like I'll grow anything. Um, just to try to grow it even if I don't like care to eat it But I thought these would be especially pretty to use in flower arranging like having those little eggplants like hanging out at the side of the vase I thought it would be really cute. I've got a couple of good-hearted tomato plants I do have tomatoes on them. I started them from seed and I planted them like actually not very long ago They were still in their tiny little trays in June poor things. This whole bed was filled with cabbage I had four green ones which we eat a lot more green cabbage than red, so those are all gone. I'm really surprised that this red cabbage has stayed so nice. Like it's formed really nice heads and they haven't split, which is amazing. So I really need to get after. I've got a couple recipes this week that call for red cabbage. Here's our other potato bed right here. A lot of leaves. It'll actually look kind of good to get these out of here. This is our other sweet potato bed right here. Looks like a 10 out of 12 took in this bed. Here's another one I planted that looked sad. Didn't do anything. But these plants will get so big and just kind of take over that it won't matter. And in the last bed here, we're getting into the sun now. This is the volunteer sunflower plant that's starting to look a little bit sad. Probably pull that here pretty quick, except for the finches love this plant. So maybe I'll just leave it. And the rest of this bed is filled with peppers. The fire away hot and heavy. They're doing really, really good. I started these from seed inside. And then we've got more strawberry plants in here. And that kind of brings us to the end. I have a pot of chives. This pot has been growing for three years. It's the same plant in there. I have it hooked to a drip system. And then there's the other arbor with the colettes and the most glorious firelight hydrangea, not firelight, limelight hydrangea you've ever seen. Let's pop out here. Look at that thing, full sun all day long. And I prune it hard every single year and it's just gorgeous. And then there, is a view this way of the vegetable garden. I particularly love this view because one, there's not a house there yet. There will be one day, but I like the weeping willow. So that's the vegetable garden as it stands at the end of July, which honestly for the end of July with all of the heat we've had, last week we had several days hovering right at 100 and over, and this week we have the same temperatures. I'm super not looking forward to. I don't really like high, high heat. Um, thankfully we don't have high humidity most days, so um, it's bearable, but the stuff looks pretty good for having gone through that. Uh, anyway, we're gonna get all of the potatoes and onions harvested first, and then we'll go through curing and drying, storing um, situations, Then we'll probably take after the strawberries. So I'm just gonna set a camera up and get after this, get this done before this garden gets in the sun. at that thing of beauty, 55 candy onions, most of which are pretty darn good size. Like I'm not sure in a regular dinner if I would actually use an onion this big. It's huge. Make sure my tag ends up on the right palette here. Now the Walla Wallas. Seventy Walla Wallas, beautiful. Now I did notice with these, I spaced them exactly the same as I did the candies here, but the size range is, it varies wildly. I got a lot of really just like medium sized onions and the ones that got really big were the ones that were toward the edge of the bed. So maybe they got more sun or something. All right, potatoes next. I brought my Felcos out because I think I'm gonna cut away all of the leaves first just to get that mess out of the way.
I'm gonna call this a win. There's the candy onions, Walla Walla onions. On this palette, we have Yukon Gold Potatoes and Huckleberry Golds, which they're all kind of covered with a layer of dirt right now until I let them dry a little bit. But this one has beautiful purple skin and yellow flesh. Look at the size of some of these potatoes, they're huge. Then we've got Dark Red Norlands and Russet Burbank and German Butterballs. Aaron got the tractor all set up with the forks because I'm gonna move all of these into the barn to dry and cure. The drying and curing process is really easy but super important. And drying is important because you don't want either the potatoes or onions to take any extra moisture with them into storage because that will cut their storage life dramatically. It can help promote rot, which you don't want to have happen. Um, so you wanna make sure, that's why I put them on pallets on, like the potatoes are on a burlap sack that's really breathable. And you wanna put them as, as thin of a layer as you can so there's a lot of airflow around them for a couple of weeks. So onions I typically dry and cure for two to three weeks and in that process of drying the onions actually um, gather energy from the roots and the leaves so I leave those attached the whole time and it helps like condense the sugars within the onion so the flavor is really wonderful. Um, so at the end of that two to three weeks with the onions I'll go in and uh, trim off the roots and the stalk and clean off any extra dirt that has dried just to make sure that they're thoroughly dry. And potatoes usually I'll dry them out and cure them for one to two weeks and at the end of that time I'll knock off any big soil any big dirt that's around the potato but I don't fully clean them usually um, yeah and then that's it and then they need to go into an area ideally that's between 50 and 55 degrees which is almost impossible for most of us to find a spot there is a little cubby in our barn I'll show you that I think we're gonna have converted into an above ground root cellar. My parents have one and I think it's gonna be pretty simple. We had our guy who does handy, like handyman projects for us. We had him come look at it and he was like, oh, this is gonna be nothing because it's already all framed in and all that business. So we might have an area, might, by this fall to put this stuff um, to where it will prolong its life. I mean, the best case for me right now is to put it in our basement, which it stays a tiny bit cooler than it does upstairs, which would, we keep our house at about 69, 70. Um, so it might be like 65 down in the basement, which is better than, you know, outside or whatever. It just won't store quite as long um, when it's not cool enough. Um, and these onions right here, Walla Wallas and Candies, are really sweet, super sweet, high sugar onions. So they're not gonna store for very long anyway. So I'm actually gonna be farming out probably half of each of the varieties to family and friends um, so that they can utilize them so they don't go bad on us. I don't wanna be wasteful. So anyway, we're gonna get the tractor. I haven't practiced a lot with the forks on this thing. I'm really good on a forklift, but not, I don't know about a tractor. We're gonna move these into the barn and then we will harvest strawberries. What a great way to start the day. I love it. And there they are looking awesome here in the barn. You do wanna find as dark a spot as you can to dry and cure both your onions and potatoes. It's more important for potatoes than onions. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover the potatoes with more burlap, which is super breathable. Um, so airflow won't be a problem. They'll still be able to dry out, but you don't want light to be resting on your potatoes because like, this is a good example right here. See how that one's turned green? Because this one was sticking up out of the soil. So it wasn't hidden from light. Um, and so that's what happens and that's actually, is it solanine? Is that what it's called? I can't remember off the top of my head. Anyway, it's not good. I'll probably toss this potato. Anyway, I've talked at length about planting, harvest, storage, curing, all of that in other videos. 
um, that are more like specific to each one of these crops. We'll go ahead and link them down below in case you want more information. It's just like, it's hard for me to remember all the details from year to year. Like I almost need to brush up every single year. So I make sure I'm doing everything right. Um, but I'm super happy with this harvest. Uh, we did videos when I planted both of these things so you can see how I amended the soil. I think that's how come I'm having such great luck this year. I added in a bunch of biotone and land and sea compost to really work the beds up really well. Um, and I think that it's really paying off. So the very last thing then I'm gonna do after I cover these potatoes is go pick the strawberries. Oh, and I almost forgot. So this is the little cubby that we wanna turn into a root cellar. It's like this random, this just leads behind our barn, but it's just this random little room where we just store like parts to the lawn tractor. We have our saw in there. We will need to have that, of course, like patched in. Um, but yeah, we'll have it insulated. We'll have an air conditioning unit put out the back of the barn um, and shelves built in there. And then we'll have to have like high, dense insul high density insulation put in the ceiling and the walls and then have an insulated door um, to create a nice little root cellar, which I think this is gonna be the perfect solution. I would love for it to be done like in the next, I don't know, I think I'm hopeful to say it would be done in the next couple of months, but it would sure be nice to I'll put these in the basement, the stuff that I actually keep for us. And then if I can haul it back out here into a proper temperature area, that'd be so awesome. I think I'll just start with the strawberries right here in this bed. And I've got my baskets right there. I'd say that's a pretty good haul for the day. And the best part about not worrying if the strawberries are perfect, like a little bit overripe right here. There are some that are a little bit misshapen, but when they're all going into jam, nobody knows. And the flavor is actually better when you throw in some of these really ripe ones. So what I'll do is I'll take these inside and I'll just let them soak in some uh, cold water in the sink real quick, just to lift any dirt. There's, oh, that that's a little bit too gross. <laughs> I'll cull any of those out and then um, get rid of some, the dirt and the tops on these and then I'm going to let them dry on some paper towels. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I will freeze them in a single layer on a cookie sheet and then I'll put them in a Ziploc bag until I'm actually ready to make the jam, which I think I probably have enough to make a small batch, but I kind of want to like be in it to win it when I get all my canning stuff out. So I want to have like a good amount of strawberries. So if I just keep up on it, I'd probably get a harvest like this probably once or twice a week. Um, then I'll have enough in no time to make a whole bunch. So anyway, that's it for today's video. I'm super happy to have everything harvested. I mean, I feel like it's been such a great year produce wise. And I'm so excited too about like what the pumpkins are doing out in the new property. I mean, they're all starting to set, which is so exciting. And um, I think we'll have a, you'll probably have seen the tour of that before this video comes up. We just filmed that. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful and we will see you in the next one. Bye.